Welcome back, ladies and gents. We are on episode 17 of the SBG podcast, and today I welcome my next guest, Mr. J.P. Boudreau. What up, world? J.P. here. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me, man. I've been uh, we've been trying to set this up for a little while now. Glad that it finally came to fruition. Yeah, man. Life's busy. I hear that. Faux show. Sure kids and businesses and everything else it's like a whirlwind especially uh since we've been having the baby it's like uh you know he's he's constantly needing to be held by one of us so then we have to either like learn to multitask real well or uh hand him off uh. yeah so my brother had his first <laughs> child so my nephew my godson he's a uh, he's eight months old and he wears a size 2t clothes Oh, dang. Yeah, he's in the 99 percentile height and 80 percent weight. So yeah, he's as big as a fucking two-year-old. Damn. Eight months old. It's going to be a big boy, linebacker yeah, material. Yeah, he's one of those CRISPR technology childs. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, what is that? So artificial inseminating. With like special characteristics. Yeah, so you mm-hmm. can turn on which markers you want, choose the strongest embryo. So he was the strongest embryo out of five. <laughs> was he like so actually? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn. Well, like test tube baby, you know? Yeah. So is that like real? Like he's actually a CRISPR baby? Yeah, yeah. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, then, so they did uh, the artificial insemination where they take the sperm and the egg. Yeah, and they could actually Put choose. it together and then put it back into the wife. Damn. But you could pick which genes, like... So uh, they say there'll be no Down syndrome in, you know, five years. Yeah, wow. You could turn off certain markers. You could choose the hair color. I didn't even know Does they were like... Does he have a soul? I don't know. We'll yeah. see. We're yet to see. <laughs> I didn't even know they were like doing that these days. That's that's crazy. Man, hell yeah. Well, cool, man. Uh, so me and JP go way back. Back in the band days. Probably, what, 10 years back is when I first yeah, met you? Yeah, 10 years. I would say 13 or 14. And like... So we were all hanging out, uh, you know, doing the band thing and, you know, getting in the mix and I, that was, you know, I saw you at first and then like, we hadn't hung out, you know, past that in two or three years, but I kept up with your like achievements on Facebook and I like watched you grow from, you know, you, you ended up going into the car sales and then you like fully, uh, you know, a hundred percent of that. Right. And then you went into the roofing and then just like I watched you de- develop as like a businessman. It was just like great to see that. Right. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, so I'm especially glad to have you here to hear it from you in person, how it all went down. So man, it came a long way in those 10 years for everybody that doesn't know, you know, I'm a recovering drug addict. I've been sober since 2017. Hell yeah. And it's just kind of cool to see it and know that your current situation isn't a death sentence. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, because it's easy. I mean, people all the time, you know, it's like it's much easier to continue down a path of self-destruction than to, like, try to get yourself out of that situation because it just doesn't seem possible, if, right? And everybody's, uh, I guess, rock bottom or their aha moments different for everybody, you know? Mm-hmm. So why don't you uh, take us down memory road and tell us how you got into the car business all right. from all of that. So by trade, I'm a drilling fluid engineer. So I worked for Halliburton for about eight, nine years. I was their youngest mud engineer. That's pretty much all I knew, you know, oil field life, going offshore, South Texas, West Texas. Through that time, you know, kind of like a lot of guys do in the oil field, you develop a little drug habit, right? taking Adderall to stay up, taking pain pills because my back hurts, slowly turns into a full-blown addiction. 2010, I was in South Texas. My little sister got killed in a car accident. You know, I had to rush home. That's whenever the habit turned to a full-blown addiction. Damn. You know, things started happening. Lost my job, dependent heavily on chemicals because you don't want to feel the pain. Fast forward a few years. I get arrested for prescription forgery. Mm. Spent 10 months in jail. That was 
got out still fucking around. You know, that's probably whenever we met. <laughs> really? Did you have to crack any skills in jail? Yeah. Like, was there any crazy stories? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to circle back on that because I love that kind of shit. So, <laughs> right, so here's one. <laughs> being, being a white bearded tattooed guy, it's probably 90-10 as far as blacks to whites. So you're outnumbered, you know, nine to one. Damn. And it's very, so, you know, it's very like clicky in jail. Like I've seen enough sure, jail sure. podcasts to know, you know. <laughs> but my first incident was I had made the mistake of fucking letting somebody make a call. So you have to pay for your phone calls. You know, you call your family, this, that, or the other. This motherfucker had his girl do a three-way call. That's against the rules. So they charged my account 75 bucks and then like overdraft at my commissary account. Well, needless to say, I wasn't too happy. Shit, lunch comes that day. I asked the dude about it. You know, demanded him to pay me this, that, or the other. He mouthed off. So I took the lunch tray and started beating his head in. Yes. His eyeball came out of his socket. <laughs> eyeball was hanging out. Then I'm like, oh, shit, am I going to kill this dude? I'm never going to get out of here. Oh, yeah. But, you know, jail code, I guess. They didn't really say anything. They just came and carted him out. He pushed that bitch back in and got back in line for the... I don't know. He never came back. <laughs> but I assume he's still living because I didn't get any additional charges. Oh, that's... Man, that's the stories I was looking for. But, you know, <laughs> being in that environment, you have to turn into that to survive. You know, because you're, you're locked up with predators. Hell yeah. Then they base who you're housed with based on bond amount. Then I... I was charged with some pretty serious charges, prescription forgery, you know, federal prescription forgery charges. So I had a very high bond, 350,000. So I was in there with murderers and rapists. Oh, and shit. Violent people. So you have to be that way or I they're going to take advantage of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I flipped the script on them pretty quick. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. And then another one, guy walks in. Turned out dude had robbed me in the past. He had set me up and broke into my house. He walks in. Oh. Tried to be friendly with me. I was like, dude, just back the fuck off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> then finally he kept talking to me, kept wanting to be friends, and I finally just lost my cool. So I walked in his cell, closed the door behind me, locked him in there, commenced to beating his ass. As one does. If they finally get in there, they pull me off, then take my arm and kind of like a... I guess similar to an arm bar, you know, and I kept trying to hit him, tear my bicep from here to my chest, dude, just straight off the bone, you know, cause in jail, you're not warmed up. You go zero to a hundred real quick, yeah. tore my bicep, dude. Couldn't get medical attention for 90 days. By that point, it, it had healed improperly, you know, damn shout out to LPCC. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. So how did it, uh, does, I mean, it's got to affect your lifting these days or has it? It's more cosmetic now. You know, it's pretty healed. Is it like shorter? Yeah, watch. Yeah, you got the. it's not connected right there? Uh-huh. Compared to the front one? Yeah, does it give you a better peak though? Because yeah, it's. Uh... I don't want to tear both of them down. <laughs> yeah. This one looks better. <laughs> That's the, the secret to the aesthetic, you yeah, know? Yeah, got that Lee Priest peak. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. But Damn. fast forward, yeah, so I get out of jail, you know, convicted felon, unfortunately. Uh, so going back to the oil field is kind of out of the question. I had a good buddy that was a sales manager of Camping World in Karen Crow, and he was like, you know, why don't you come try your hand in this? I would have never saw myself as a fucking salesman. Give it a shot, man, and it turned out I was really good at it quickly rose to the top i was the top producer at camping world then i transitioned to cars shit became top dog over there you know then went to a bigger dealership shit rose to the top there Damn. but the hours were really uh tough uh six days a week 10 hours a day mm -hmm. then same guy that i went work for at camping world he started running a roofing company so followed him there, man. That was two years ago, and I think I found my calling. Yeah, that's sick. I make my own schedule, you know, create your own destiny. You eat what you kill. So it's 100% commission, and I love that idea that your hustle dictates your pay. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know if I could go back to a salary position or getting paid by the hour. Man, that's sick. Yeah, I, I saw whenever you had first gotten into that, and then like now, now you like uh, are you like part owner of it now? Or are you like I'm owner? the sales manager, so I get a little piece of everything. You know, got a little percentage of it. We got eight guys working underneath me. Nice. And is that the only? I'd say we're top three roofing company in Acadiana as far as you know production and how many jobs we put out there. Yeah. And what's the name of it? VE Roofing, v. Vincent roofing. Enterprises. Word. I'll be posting links to this in the description as well in case you y'all know, all need a new roof or some repairs. Hit this man up. I specialize in insurance claims, so if you got any storm damage, you know, I'd love to come out there, slap your insurance company around, and make them pay. Hell yeah. and Because uh, we pay the second or third highest premiums in the whole country. Um, you know, due to being coastal, all the storms, all the insurance fraud that goes on here. Did y'all do work during Laura, like for that, and like Delta, y'all? Yeah, yeah. That was before I had got into it, but yeah. Mm. Storm chasers, they call it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I can't even imagine, especially like this year, there's a lot of shit going down. But I also like doing something to where I could help people. Yeah. You know, then protecting somebody's home with a new roof, you know? It doesn't get much better than that. Do y'all put on a lot of metal roofs or is it mostly like shingle? Like what, what would probably you... really 80, 20, probably 80% shingle, 20% metal, but metal's the way to go. It's a lifetime roof. I was about to say, it's like, man, cause we used to have a shingle roof and the storm would blow and it would just, you know, yeah. shingles fly off. But now we have the metal and it's like, man, why would you like, I just never knew until we had it. And I was it's like, definitely Shit. worth paying a little more for the metal roof for sure, man. Don't yeah. have to worry about it again. It's crazy. But selling used cars, you know, you feel a little slime ball sometimes because you're selling people something that you know is a piece of shit. Mm. But it's all that your credit could buy or it's all you could afford. Mm-hmm. But I've actually lost friends over that. Really? Yeah. I can imagine. You yeah. know nothing personal. I didn't know any better. <laughs> I mean, shit, you're buying a 100,000-mile car. Yeah, it's a gamble for sure. What's the most expensive vehicle you ever sold? Brand new Hellcat or a a Dodge TRX. So about $140,000. Cool. Yeah, $140,000 was my uh, top car that I've sold. Damn. I wonder, like, what is is the monthly on something like that? (laughs) $2,800. But like a diesel (laughs) truck, that's $90,000. Shit, that's a $1,500 car truck note. Oh, my God. (laughs) And you got guys coming in there, they're barely making four or five grand a month trying to get a $1,500 car note. Yes. As Joe Biden would say, come on, man. (laughs) (laughs) You're not going to regret that financial decision later down the road. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah, uh, that's higher than my mortgage. I don't want to pay that on a vehicle. (laughs) People always want, uh, you know, to keep up with the Joneses, like they say. Oh, yeah, the materialistic uh, world it's we live in. It's part of the uniform for being in the oil field or working in the plants around here. You got to have the diesel truck. <laughs> even if you don't even need yeah. that kind of towing. Yeah, never or pulled the trailer before. <laughs> I got a one ton truck. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I am of. Uh, I'm I'm the opposite of that. I hold on to things until they fall apart. Yeah. Uh, I wore the same shorts for so long that they dry rotted off of my body one time. Uh, my parents like framed the pocket <laughs> of those shorts. Actually, yeah. Fun. I have fact. a very basic truck too. You know, <laughs> a, a base model truck. Yeah. I spend my money on other things. Food. I was about to say, yeah. yeah. I love to eat really good. Oh, man. Sushi. That is my vice oh, for sure. Yeah, I love some sushi. Where's your favorite spot? Mm. So I try and find value, right? Yeah. Uh, so Oishi, oh, all the Kali's. Best good. of the best. That's one of the top ones. The Shannon roll and the LT roll over there. Uh-huh. Yep. I haven't been there in a few years, though, man. Yeah, we we work uh, right across the street from there now yeah. at, uh, at Techno. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's still hit, open during the week. Yeah, we we hit it like for lunch and uh, it's like twenty thirty minute wait, but it's worth it for sure. Yeah, Fiji's really good too. Yeah, yeah, and Shinto. 
man. I wish that they had a good place in Church Point for that. I went to Rod's and tried theirs, and maybe I just got not the correct roll to get, but, uh, you know, I was not expecting it. It was different than I was expecting. It was yeah. terrible, but, you know, they just need to open up a quality one down here somewhere. Man, making it... <laughs> Making it yourself is good, too. I tried that, right? So uh, I can make a mean spam roll, <laughs> but uh, I'm always weary because I like the raw stuff, right? Yeah, same. And I don't know exactly what it takes. If you just have to freeze it and that's enough to kill any pathogens or whatever the hell is on there, I, I just don't know the procedure for, yeah. like, cleaning fish. It's just got to be fresh, fresh, fresh. Yeah, but, yeah, I love, like, raw salmon much better than cooked salmon. I prefer raw tuna. I prefer tuna mm-hmm. over salmon in a sushi application. Oh, yeah. But uni is good, too. You ever had that? Sea urchin? Oh, that's on my list of stuff yeah. to try for sure. Because I always see how, I mean, everybody, like, drops to their knees and fucking busts whenever they <laughs> bite thing. into that shit, right? <laughs> Have you, You've had it before, oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how is it? It's like... The... It's unique. It tastes like sea candy. Damn. Sweet, but also salty. That's awesome. Hard to describe. I had uh, some of the guys that we work with, um, they travel, you know, a lot, and they're not opposed to spending a, a decent chunk on food because that's what they like, you know, the yeah. foodie, you know, style, right? And we had a dude uh, go up to New York, I want to say, and he spent 500 bucks on one dinner for sushi, and it was because each piece was like 25 bucks yeah i was like holy shit it's like this cost of like a good really good roll down here <laughs> so crazy i'm not a big fan of the all you could eat places though i've tried it it's just not worth it to me yeah like sushi Maza? Yeah, yeah some of their stuff ain't too bad like if i'm just like man budgeting but yeah i agree it's like eh, quality not terrible it tastes like like uh like a mush of flavors together. Good sushi, you could taste every ingredient and the different flavor profiles in it. To me, sushi masa just tastes like yeah, spicy mayo. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's all you taste. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. So, um, I've been seeing that you've been going to uh, what is it? There's like business uh, entrepreneur. Oh, B and I, Business Networking International. Yeah, how is that? Like, how'd you that's get into that? That's one of that? the better. Uh, decisions that i've ever made professionally man really been involved in it for about a year and a half now so there's several chapters in the Acadiana area mine's called bayou biz and we meet at petroleum club at 8 30 every thursday and it's like having a network of 20 people that are referral partners but friends also and we all learn from each other it's a lot of people that i wouldn't have normally met yeah that's the best you know then there's one professional per seat per group so there's one roofer there's one chiropractor there's one banker yeah. there's one technology guy there's one security guy that's right then we all kind of refer each other you know it's a trusted group of people that we know does good business nice well, come check it out one morning man i might have come to do me. that yeah it would be interesting just to see it sounds like uh man Whenever you think of like high up people behind closed doors, <laughs> meetings that go yeah. on. Uh, right. You know, under- there's a uh, a guy that's in it. That's uh, he's president of a pretty large bank. So it's a lot of people that you wouldn't normally get to meet. Yeah, yeah. That, man, that's that's awesome. You know, and then the cool thing is being around all these uh, super successful people. You just realize, man, they're really just like me. And just normal people. Yeah, and that's inspiring. You know, that work hard. Do they talk about how they got started and whatever oh, yeah, they're doing? Yeah, man, these people have became really good friends to me. You know, we have lunch, dinner, we go to each other's houses, we have parties. Kind of like, kind of mentorship as well, you know? Mm-hmm. Man, that's sick. Because real recognizes real. You know, they could tell that you're serious about things and they'll take you under their wing. That's awesome. Because I was never taught about finances, you know, growing up. I was never told how important a credit score is or how to beat tax burdens or how to build credit, how to save money, Mm -hmm. different strategies, you know. 
I, I grew up watching my parents, you know, spend all their money and shit, maxing out credit cards. Didn't really know any better. So it's cool to really get educated by people that have been there and done it the right way. For sure. Yeah. And then you have like a metric to go against to know that you're doing the correct thing instead. Right, because you like... see it and see it in real life. Mm -hmm. You know, if I stay the course and I do these things, this is what I have to look forward to. That's awesome. Success incarnate. It's great to hear. Shit, that's the most addicting uh, a drug there is, is being successful. <laughs> I Breaking the generational curses and doing things with your life. Absolutely. <clears throat> we were talking about the... Uh, the flipping and the uh, you know eBay reselling and stuff and uh, you know I feel like I have some sort of uh, mild level of uh, autism about me. Whenever I get into something, I go pretty hard yeah. into it. You know, it's probably developed from video games and everything else like that. But uh, <laughs> you know, I it uh, I've always like craved something that like you were talking about, right? When you're making like a hundred percent commission off, of, and that's how you eat it drives that mentality of like, I have to go hard in this. And then when you see the, the yield come out of it and it is like double or triple what you put in, it's like a feedback loop. Sure. And that, like you said, it's addicting, yeah. right? So then that's what I was been checking out with the, you know, the eBay thing. It's just like to the potential of that. And, uh, you know, that's been my, been studying gene and, brands. And hustling's fun too. You know, it's fun, mm -hmm. challenging. It's exciting. It feels good. It feels good to not have to depend on like a nine to five. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so you get out and you do it and you take it. Yeah. It's like aggressive, right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's different. I mean, I, I haven't really, uh, I've, I've mostly been hourly and nine to five, uh, in salary all my life. So I really yeah. haven't had a job that is based in commission or anything like that, but I do <clears throat> enjoy the idea of it. I've just, I guess because I'm getting my toes wet now and starting to see what that even looks like. It's yeah. like, man, that's, I like I like the pursuit, right? Yeah. You know, the, actually, like we said outside, the joy's in the pursuit. Mm -hmm. That's where the lessons are learned. That's where you find out who you really are is in the pursuit of happiness and pursuing goals. You know, you set goals for yourself and the joy is the process of achieving them. Mm -hmm. Then you achieve it and you're like, well, fuck, better set some new ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Found the best armor in the video game. Can't quit now. Yeah. Man, I haven't played video games in a long time. So what console do you like to play on? Um, honestly, it is uh, similar with me, right? Like I, I find that I have to almost force myself to play something just to like, quiet my brain sometimes because I'll want to do so much other things that um, you know sometimes I'll, you know it's all I can do to just sit down and play something but lately <clears throat> uh, I've actually gotten back on Diablo 2 <laughs> you used to play that or mm. have you messed with it? No but I've heard of it so they have a, a remastered edition and I downloaded a bunch of mods for that yeah. I've been playing the shit out of that and mostly it's only because you know the baby right I'm having to do things with one hand so and I I enjoy listening to you know people talk about you know being successful with different things like right like right now is the eBay thing right so I'll be listening to you know how to source out the right Dude, clothing there's some really or good podcast that too right on that while I play that game so yeah. then that's kind of like where i double dip and i can hold my baby and i can play this with one hand so it kind of lends itself to still being useful time uh, uh but yeah the, the podcast world there's so much education to be had with whatever yeah like how, did you i'm sure you like slammed a bunch of those whenever you were like on your path oh dude that's a big part of my success is a self-motivating self-improvement podcast man what are some of the ones that you've checked big out big fan of so I, I like Ed Milet, uh, Ryan Stuman, I like, uh, sh Real Talk with Andy Frisella. Never heard. Then of when him. I want to go down like the conspiracy tinfoil hat shit, Sam Tripoli. 
Hell yeah. Uh, Greg Carlwood, the higher side chats. Mm. But I'm into a lot of uh, paranormal, metaphysical, conspiracy theory slash alien stuff. Oh, yeah. Same. I go down those rabbit holes a lot. It's like brain candy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's addicting too, you know? What's the possibility? I'm smart enough to know that I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't claim to know the secrets, but I know it's probably the opposite of what we're being fed. You, uh, you've been tracking the uh, latest solar uh, activity? Somewhat, somewhat. Man, I was... Uh, you got some flares coming? Well, we just had one, right? We just had that big CME. Mm-hmm. And um, I last night I tried to go out there because I think uh, down here, I think in Opelousas even, they were taking like long exposure and they could see the aurora, yeah. which is like pretty bonkers that you it's could crazy. see that down this here. far south, it's called the northern lights, you know? Uh, yeah. And uh, there's a whole... Uh, there's a lot of fuckery going on for sure, dude. Yeah. There's a, there's a deep rabbit hole of that as far as like... Um, you know the sun phases and also the earth phases right with the uh the, the magnetic polar flip and all yeah. that stuff and should be flipping here soon they say well yeah so the symptom polar flip. A, a symptom of that would be that we're able to see those auroras right. down yeah. here because our magnetic it's north field to south, is south uh, is north now it's uh-huh. a flip and, and while it's happening our magnetic shield weakens and it allows for that to affect more so then yeah it's I'll send you some videos yeah, on that. Was... Definitely some fuckery going on with these hurricanes, man. Oh yeah, man. Well, so, okay. So then that, um, I, you know, that, that, the, the amount of energy that we've been getting from all of these solar impacts, uh, you know, that's, I mean, you can research it yourself and everything, but it's, apparently that's a symptom of that as well. You, you take yeah, in more energy the storms. and then, yeah. And so then now it's like, yeah, you, it, we're, what well, the last one could have been almost like a cat six hurricane Milton that just hit. Yeah, they said, I thought it was basically at terminal velocity that the earth couldn't really support a stronger storm. Right. Yeah. Cause it's it was as like strong a, as one could get 180 miles an hour winds yeah. or something. So <laughs> stay, I can't even they imagine. They have those a lot, uh, storms that size, like in the Pacific, you know, mm-hmm. uh, typhoon, typhoon and the Asia's it's should they routinely have uh storms that are 200 miles per hour. Sustained winds. Oh my god! I guess it's a little warmer, maybe on the Pacific side of things. I wonder what the roofing business is like over there. So it's mostly grass huts, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like Japan, man, they have lifetime roofs. You know, they build their cities and towns to be able to withstand that. And you got to imagine their history goes back a long time. So it's like, yeah. what kind of knowledge do they have to know? like okay maybe there's like seasons large scale seasons of the earth where you need to have this type of shit in place for whenever like crazy shit goes down yeah. that people aren't really used to like hundred thousand year cycles two thousand year cycles <laughs> oh man there's a lot of ancient civilizations that have been through it you know mm-hmm. so i'm real big into that too you know tataria you familiar with tataria Mm-mm. oh man I'll send you some links. That's a whole nother podcast. But do you remember the World's Fair in Chicago? Mm-hmm. I think late 1800s. Where did those buildings come from? Every major city had like Roman architecture. And they're claiming that they built these these expos for the World's Fair. Building something like that would take hundreds of years. Uh, I never really investigated. So all throughout the United States... There's a theory that we're ancient civilization here. Really? Called Tataria. Then, like, you know, there's a Memphis, Tennessee. There's a Memphis, Egypt. Which one was first? (laughs) You know, think about that. Interesting. I've never even heard that theory. There's a Moscow, Texas. You know, there's all kinds of... Like European and Asian city names that are here, and there's theories that they name the European and Asian cities after the Americas. It's all theoretical, you know. Like I said a while ago, I don't know what the fuck's going on, mm-hmm. but I know it's not what they're feeding us. Brings the uh, Washington Monument to mind, the obelisk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the symbology of like why? Why would they? I mean, put they that have there? monuments like that throughout the world. Mm-hmm. Pyramids throughout the world. You know, every civilization had a pyramid. Then if you look at pyramids in these cities, like it almost looks like a motherboard. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, like a like a giant like a chip stones. Uh, what is it? Micro? Yeah, microchip, yeah, yep. giant microchip or a macro chip. Yep, that is crazy. I think the pyramids were uh, probably energy generators. Mm-hmm. So I mean, yeah. Tesla proved that you could have wireless energy. I'm sure they had it figured out thousands of years ago. Then we got wiped out. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've dabbled in that a whole lot. I were... backed off a little bit, you know, because it could consume you. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. then you start to realize, oh, shit, what the hell am I even going to work for? Nothing really matters. <laughs> uh, the sun's going to explode in a couple of years while I'm grinding for this paper money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you might as well enjoy your life. <laughs> That's whenever I get into the like, man, it's all right if I just uh, hit this another $40 uh, dinner night, $50, yeah. you know, what's it going to matter later down the road? <laughs> See, I don't have kids, so the budget's not quite as important to me, thank, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, the uh, the baby formula, man, that uh, that has been the latest fiasco for oh, us. Dude. Babies are expensive. Children it's crazy. Are expensive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we've been trying like five and six different kinds of formulas, and it's been hard on his stomach. Yeah, and uh, also he's teething, so then it's like you really don't know. Like, oh, okay, right, okay he's going to be, be uncomfortable this. anyway. Yeah, so man, been going through it, but it's uh, it's interesting. I can't. I have a coworker that I think he's on his like seventh or eighth kid that he's he's had currently recently, and I can't even imagine. Are they Pentecostal or something? Um, yeah, I think it's like a, you know, religious type yeah, thing, right? right? I don't think it's Pentecostal, but, you know, somewhere, you know, to where... Yeah, a hardcore Christian Yeah, faith. and, uh, man, it's it's commendable, though. It's like, I can't even imagine. You gotta have the, the iron will to, uh, <laughs> to have a kid. But the crazy thing is, right, that, it, so, I have, I mean... We, we're talking a little conspiracy. We want to do, let's 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 dig into it a little bit. Let's do it. Money, right? The reason that in our brains, oh, eight kids—that's crazy to have. Back in the day, like in the sixties, that was normal. And so, why is it crazy right now? Because it's fucking hard to afford that many kids right. and your time is stretched then because you're trying to grind for money right yeah because you're having to work 60 hours a fucking week back in the day you had eight kids to work the farm the more yep. kids you had the better off the whole family was and also your dollar was more valuable yeah by like probably two or three times the amount dude it's crazy so even with like the inflation rate you know i mean back in the 30s 40s and 50s so a family could make it, you know, working a normal job. You had a nice home, food on the table, didn't have debt collectors knocking down your fucking door. Mm-hmm. At 10 cents an hour, shit, you live like a king. Right. And so then it's really a form of Slavery. being able to throttle, right? You can, if you feel like, uh, you know, production of uh, humans is going too high, you throttle that amount got less birth rate you just can't have kids because you can't afford it well just not only crazy. that shit through the gmos and the poison they put in our food i was reading a, a study today that the average 20 year old's testosterone level is mm. lower than a 60 year old man was <laughs> 20 years ago yeah that's fucking absurd yeah and like like you said like probably by design probably it, not by accident by design because Men with lower testosterone levels are not going to revolt. They're not going to uprise. They're going to do what they're fucking told. Mm -hmm. Definitely by design, man. So Russia, by law, you can't even grow a GMO, much less sell it. They won't allow their population to eat GMOs. Wow. By law. And that's what they're <laughs> force feeding us and our kids. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And uh, so you got that working against your population as well as like brain rot uh psyop type uh social engineering going on yeah, to dude. weaken your resolve social media has fucked us over <laughs> infinite Especially scrolling generation. yeah 
TikTok. I heard that like even the uh, even the algorithms as far as like what you're presented is like totally different here versus like China or anywhere oh, yeah. else where the app was like created because they want China people to be designed like, for enrichment. Yeah, like enrichment. Their TikTok is pure enrichment program. Yeah, here it's here, dumbest down. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> uh, something's coming, man. Oh my god, sure, we'll see some major events in our lifetime. I know, right? I keep thinking about that. Oh man, it's like when you if it it. All, it I want to say since COVID, it just hasn't felt right. Like we, that was like the test run. That was like the destabilization to see how we'd go. As Shit, in 2012, as... did we fucking like, did we end the simulation? <laughs> you know, did we have that restart? Did the mind calendar end and then the simulation restart it? Mm. There's all kind of theories, man. Yeah, but, CERN. Uh, you know, Mandela effect. Oh yeah, Bernstein bears, bro. Dude shazam kazam there's all kind of shit <laughs> yeah i uh i've been tracking the uh the middle east uh war shit and the uh the russia shit pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. close it feels like uh anytime something crazy could pop off like while i'm also trying to save up to just pay off debts i'm also like in the back of my mind I'm like hey what what water collection systems do we have what kind of like yeah, that's <laughs> food what preservation you know, that's why I've tried to develop skills. You know, my pepper jelly, my hot sauce. It's to barter with. Hell you know? yeah. So you find things that you're good at and that you thrive at, and you trade it with people that concentrate on things they're good at. Mm-hmm. Like, your setup mm-hmm. out here is perfect. Perfect. Appreciate that. It's definitely a work in progress constantly. It's like, especially oh, it'll with It'll be that. a lifetime thing. It'll yeah. be a lifetime chase. And it's interesting that you end up going into things that you really wouldn't have thought that you would have. Like I wouldn't have thought that I would have been building shit like carpentry style out here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's enjoyable because it feels like a Minecraft type thing. Once you get the hang of it. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm going to build this so that I can, you know, it's it's like an eighth of the cost to hire somebody to build your deck. Then it's cool to build things and produce things and then make a finished product with it. Mm hmm. And see the fruits of your labor, you know, literally. Absolutely. You know, then consuming chemical-free food, I mean, that's a must. Yeah, for sure. Gardens. I've been seeing your gardens on, uh, on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I love the garden. Oh, man, it's, it looks sick. Like, all the pepper variety that you have. All uh, if you send Yeah, me so some I get pictures, those Baker it'll... Creek seeds. So I have, like, 15 or 20 exotic peppers that I've never seen before. Really? Until I started growing them. You're going to have to send me some pictures of yeah, them, and then yeah. I'll post them right here. Cool. Tell us about some of that stuff, man, and the, and the pepper jelly. I don't know how you got into that. I just always liked it, and then I met a lady, Tessie Stevens. She just passed away a couple months ago. She actually taught me how to make it, you know, old school, and just fell in love with it. I just always loved pepper jelly, and it's cool to make something and customize it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm real big in the culinary art, so cooking's always been a passion of mine. So it's Same. just kind of like the natural evolution. Same. And then to be able to share that with people is pretty cool too. You know, Absolutely. try this that I made. Bring joy into their life like it's about me. A hundred percent. I feel that. And it's a good marketing tool too. You know, my hot sauce and pepper jelly. I put my sticker on it and give it to customers. Then whenever they have a shingle blown off in their yard and they just made a biscuit with my pepper jelly. Oh shit. Let me call JP. Right. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. I need it. I need to try that hot sauce sometimes. Yeah. It looks, uh, it looks and then I crazy. make it with whatever's fresh. It's like whatever's in season, you know, whatever I could get my hands on. Uh-huh. What's the hottest pepper you've grown made sauce out of? Um, ghost and scorpion. Oh, the scorpion is uh, something yeah. serious right mm-hmm. there. <laughs> so I have one called like a biohazard ghost pepper or some shit. It's like 3.5 million Scoville units. Oh. But at that point, it's just hot to be hot. I'm yeah. more about the flavors. Yeah. You know, flavor profiles and different ingredients. I'm doing a, some Parmesan pepper jelly this weekend. I've never even heard of, was that, Parmesan? It's like a hybrid between a tomato and a peach. It grows on a tree. It's one of like the oldest fruits. It's an inverted flower, kind of similar to a fig. fig but really? it's local to Louisiana. 
Parmesan. I think that's how you properly say it. Parmesan, P E R M I S S O N. Very unique. Oh, uh, is it a persimmon? Persimmon. Persimmon. Yeah. Yes. Persimmon might might be right. And they're like orange and soft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when they're ripe. They're like a hybrid between a tomato, yeah, peach apple. But yeah, they get soft like a custard when they're ripe. My uh, so we have. <clears throat> wild persimmons at my yeah, dad's smaller. camp. Yeah, and it's crazy. Persimmon. Fucking parsimon. <laughs> I was like, man, I've, uh, the description sounds familiar <laughs> with the pronunciation. But yeah, whenever we bust those things open, it tastes... My grandma used to make persimmon bread. Yeah. And it tastes just like that, just eating it like that. And yeah. it just blew my mind whenever we discovered that he had those. Those were just like... At his camp, whenever he bought them, he had like several Deer trees out there. Yeah, yeah. No. Deer, raccoons. I, but I had uh, I blended some up with my immersion blender, and my nephew was over the other day, and I was feeding it to him like baby food. He fucking loved it, man. That's awesome. So I do that, or I'm going to start doing that more, you know, kind of making baby food. Yeah. Just one ingredient, two ingredients. Much Keep healthier than the GMO route. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, uh, I've dabbled over time in different, uh, growing different stuff. It's, it takes so much work to figure out what you're good at growing. Cause yeah, right. like, just because they say that it's easy to grow on the internet, like potatoes. Have you tried to grow potatoes before? I've grown sweet potatoes before. And, uh, was it, I mean, so I, I did it in containers. So what I like about container garden is it's, a uh, it's more controlled environment. You could control your soil. You could control the moisture. You could control the bugs, the pest. Yeah, for sure. But I really want to start doing like larger crops, you know, sweet potatoes, red potatoes, beans, peas, different legumes, things that have a lot of uh, high nutritional value. Yeah. And I, I enjoy canning things, man. Really? I can a lot of stuff. My dad had got us that pressure cooker yeah. right there for that. So pressure cookers for... uh for low pH foods, your meats, your beans, tomatoes that are high acidic and peppers. I don't need a pressure cooker. You could just water bathe them, but anything that's low pH, you put in a pressure cooker because to kill the botulism, you got to get it to a seven or 800 degree oh. to properly preserve it. Meat, especially. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Get the ball, the ball canning book. You know, ball can ball jars. Yeah. They have a uh, canning book. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Anything you could ever think of. It's crazy. It's crazy to even think that you could can meat and yeah. put it on a shelf and it'd yeah. be okay. <laughs> 36 months if you properly do it, man. It doesn't need refrigeration. Damn. That is. <laughs> or actually, if there's some cheese on sale at Sam's or something, you can that too and it's good for two or three years. Wow. All of you watching, uh, we are all extremely spoiled to refrigeration. Yeah, that's a fact. And so if you ever had one thing that you could like look into for survival, canning yeah, probably canning. would be right up there with like water. Canning and dehydrating is yeah. great too. You know, you could dehydrate <laughs> meat, fruits, vegetables. Oh yeah. You know, then put them in those uh Teflon bags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> I've tried to grow, uh, back at the old house we did really well with habaneros and that was completely mm -hmm. by accident, like I really wasn't even trying to grow them. Pep hot peppers grow fairly easy because they like a hot, dry environment, mm. you know, perfect for here. Then the hotter and drier it is, the more capsaicin they produce, so the hotter they are. Mm. Yeah, they were pretty warm. And it is crazy how they have like a natural smoky flavor to them. Almost floral too, like, mm -hmm. a, like a flower. Very unique. The uh, <clears throat> the scorpion pepper sauce that we get from Tabasco, we uh -huh. have some of the office that tastes floral yeah. as well, and it's like so I, that style of pepper, uh, like Scotch bonnet, your habaneros, ghost scorpion, butte joke, they all have that uh, floral flavor. Mm. Trinidad scorpion, that's another real hot one that I've grown, and it makes you want to like eat a bunch of it because it tastes like that but then it's hot as fuck yeah, but it tastes good <laughs> yeah. but then your body releases endorphins too it almost gives you a little high mm -hmm. you know whenever you're eating and it's really good for you too capsaicin is good for your heart 
Ah. Hot peppers are really good for your circulation, your circulatory system. On the subject of hot peppers, uh, the other, like two days ago, uh, I have some of that Bulldog uh, ramen. Have you tried that? Mm-mm. Super spicy ramen. The base level of it is spicy as hell. <clears throat> and then they have like a two times spicy. And that one is just like super crazy. But I want to ha- make some chili oil soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so I was eating some of this ramen and my kids were watching me. And they were like, how, how spicy is that? <laughs> Should have given them a bite. I did. <laughs> and they were like, so they at first they were trying to be cool and just doing like finger dabs of the sauce. And they were like, oh, it's not too bad. And I was like, eat a little piece of this chicken then. <laughs> It lit my youngest one up, and he was screaming, trying to get some, you know. Some milk. You got to give yeah. him some milk. <laughs> so I gave him some milk. And uh, once they calmed down, I let him watch videos of people doing that death nut challenge. Have yeah, you seen that uh, shit? That I actually, chip, too. That death chip. Yeah. That's fucking stupid. I ate one of those little death nut peanuts one time, and it was horrible. I ate a jelly bean like that. They have a jelly bean that's fucking crazy like that. Oh, my God. I don't it's, like hot just to be hot. I like the flavors. Yeah, it's like once it hits your stomach, oh, it feels dude. like, oh, man. Wouldn't Kill I you. recommend? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so you uh, you like to cook, right? I love to cook, man. What's something that you like to cook, man? What's one of your favorite dishes that you... That's hard to say. It just depends, man. Salmon. I do like a candied balsamic salmon that's really good. Do a lot of rice and gravy. Oh, yeah. Pretty much whatever is fresh, though. Like, I'll go to the farmer's market, and if they have some fresh squash or zucchini, I'll make, like, a ratatouille or... If if I could get my hands on some wild game, go fishing. You know, fresh caught fish is some of the best stuff to me. Mm Mm-hmm. Did a a pork roast yesterday. Just whatever. Whatever is fresh. I feel that. Big component of fresh quality ingredients. I'm not a big processed food guy. I'll give you some uh, fresh sausage that I have that nice. we made like a month or two ago. So the next time when you do a brown gravy, you gotta yeah. let me know how it turns out. We did uh, we get them pork shoulders on sale. Yeah, you know, grind them up. I think I did like. So that's 30. what we're using bougie bologna, yeah. pork shoulder, pork shoulder, and a uh, picnic roast. You know, that's a more fatter pork shoulder cut. Yeah, got a little more fat in it for better. Viscous, viscosification. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had some of that bougie bologna the other day. It was pretty good stuff. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, we, we use that new news so- uh, seasoning up in there. Yeah. It turns out real good. Yeah, I like new news, man. They're building a, uh, building a new one in Maurice where I live, a big one. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm excited about that. Nice. You ever try to make any of your own sausage or anything like that? No, I haven't. I it, need to start doing it, man. It's another. It's, I, I want to get a hand crank. Okay, so I've dabbled in that. I have a hand crank just strictly in case the world stops turning and electricity is hard to find. But I wouldn't recommend. I wouldn't recommend the style that I have because I got a suction cup kind of. Yeah. Suction cups to yeah, the yeah. damn counter and it's not reliable. The, you know, you're cranking against it. It's going to want to come up. If you got one that mounts on the on the table, Inside. probably good, right? But uh electric, you yeah, know, that's that's what we've used and it's pretty it's pretty good. You'll get a good workout for yeah. sure cranking that bitch. But uh it is that in itself is a uh it's a cool thing to start dabbling in just because like the meat sales like meat is like expensive right just trying to eat good quality shit is is pricey so when you when you can find like the deals and you can make your own sausage or your own ground meat man it's it's, it's pretty cool yeah i need to start hunting again it's probably been 12 or 13 years since i've been hunting damn but I mean, venison's the way to go. Oh yeah, deer and, and you get a wild pig, then you make your own sausage. I when so whenever we shot, I shot that pig. I think last year with my crossbow, and I was surprised at the difference of the meat texture to oh, on color, domestic. texture, taste, yeah, smell, all of it, dude. The the store bought pigs eat slop. Yeah. That's it. Full of hormones, full of antibiotics, 
<laughs> full of disease a lot of times, man. Shit, a lot of those pigs that they slaughter at the slaughterhouse are full of pus and tumors. It's fucking disgusting. Excuse mm-hmm. my French. Oh, yeah. I've seen them videos a be whole lot. Be close to your food source, man. Yeah, and it's like... The, it, you know, I'm a big animal lover, but I eat meat, so I almost feel obligated to get back into hunting, you know, to get back to my roots and, you know, show honor to the animals, not just keep eating this crap from the store. And the taste, the quality is just so much better. Mm-hmm. You know, there's another thing I found, too, is like you're more prone to eating the organ meat whenever oh, you yeah, kill when fresh. something. yeah, that's the best, dude. Right, yeah, it's like the multivitamin, Kidney liver, right? you put it on a skewer and cook it right on an open flame. Mm-hmm. You know, same day. As you're field dressing it, put that organ meat to the side. Yep. That's the best. Shit, heart's pretty good, too. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my shit right yeah, there. Yeah, you flame, flame grill that. Mm-hmm. Or just do it on an open fire, charred a little bit. Rare. I've even dabbled I in like eating. liver, man. Yeah. Liver is dang good. Yeah, I tr- it's it, I like it, but with the rest of my family does not, so it's yeah. hard for me. I have to like cook my own you cook thing. Cook some onions. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and especially like living out here, we uh, I've, I've dabbled in raccoon and possum as well. So raccoons all about cleaning it properly. They got about twelve glands on it that you have to make sure you clean right, so you don't right. taint the meat. Yeah, and so, but after you do that, it tastes actually pretty good. Yeah, if you and, put it in a crock pot, slow cook it with some onions, potatoes, celery, mm-hmm. carrots. The uh, yeah, it's the it's the toughness. If you can like, yeah, get you gotta past cook that, it low and yeah. slow. But so uh, you cook it enough though, it gets tender. Oh yeah, I would, same with goats. You know, goats mm-hmm. have a strong flavor and they're tough. But if you cook it long enough and slow, they say that's some of the better barbecue. Texas is real big on barbecued mutton. Yeah, I got a story about that. I was out here. I had to repair some plumbing uh, in my wall probably like five or six months ago, and that was a big headache, but I got it done, right? But I was telling my neighbor next door about that just random one day during the middle of the afternoon. I was like, all right, you know, I'll see, you know bullshitting with him about that. And he was like, man, I got some headache going on too. I got one of my, uh, my cow stepped on one of my sheep's legs and broke it and now we're trying to figure out what the heck we're gonna do with it and i was yeah. like you want to slaughter it yeah he was like man if you if you will i'll you know I'll let you have half the meat it's like let's get her done right now then went over there brought my little 22 out there popped it in the head freaking went over and you know got half out. a lamb cleaned it up it was it's, it was like the purest form of neighborly bartering yeah. you know i'll do this service if i could take half the animals yeah. like man we we're in the little house on the prairie today is right here. <laughs> I really like to get some cattle someday too, man. So it all depends on what your tolerance for like risk with animals is because I found like yeah. my dad used to have a bunch of cows and they're big enough to where if they get out, it's a problem. And it's also a hazard if they get on a road and shit. Right, right. And yeah, where's the like, liability for that? If your cow gets out and causes an accident, mm-hmm. you're probably liable. And they're not easy. Like, you can't just pick them up and put yeah, them right. somewhere. Yeah, a fucking uh, tractor, backhoe. <sighs> yeah, so then having watched him go through that shit, I was like, man, I just want to stick with stick animals smaller. that are, like, manageable yeah, yeah. by hand. So that's why I chose the goat route. Uh, but, yeah, like, as far as, like, meat production, it, it might honestly, you know, it's probably not on par, but it's probably not far behind because you get like most sheep or goats have like twins whenever they're born. Mm-hmm. Right. Pairs. So then the amount of meat that you get on from that is probably pretty good still, even though it's not a big animal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Cost less to feed too. Yeah. They, uh, they're pretty good out there in the pasture. I wouldn't reckon like the rabbits. The only reason that they're like somewhat manageable for feeding is because I'm able to yeah, cut yeah. The, from the field. But man, rabbits are good to supplement meat, but they don't have any fat on them, so you can't live just off of a rabbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are. There's uh, been some survival situations where people actually died because that was the only protein that they were able to get. Oh, really? It's the uh, leucine or something, right? In there, they don't have that, and that's that and the lack of fat. Really? But yeah, I think it's the leucine as well as an amino acid they don't produce, Mm -hmm. so your body can't. uh, can't heal itself cell production wise you can't reproduce cells without leucine it's crazy you know i guess years and years of eating that you know you turn <laughs> into a zombie or some shit 
Nothing's healing, Paul. I got the rickets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh. But eggs, man. I could eat eggs every day. Oh, I absolutely. love some good form eggs. Eggs and rice. 100%. So chopped up bougie bologna in it, baby. Man, if you stick around long enough, I'm cooking some, uh, Korean bulgogi style uh, ground beef with some vegetables, and we could put a little egg on there, farm yeah. fresh egg if you want. I got, I'm gonna cook some rice. We're gonna do it up tonight, Damn, bro. Get a little taste of the cooking. I have yet to cook for a guest, so this would be interesting if you do end up sticking around for that. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I like I like cooking a whole lot too. I've, I've I've talked about my curries and stuff like that. The reason that I do that is just because I want to eat like good quality like uh exotic food and then i also force myself to try something new mm-hmm. i have a collection of cookbooks and i'll just randomly pick like a parisian style recipe from the 1600s to try really i try to make a point i guess at least once a month to try to cook something that's strange exotic and i've never tried before that's awesome yeah you know broaden my horizons because we get it kind of lackadaisical and stuck in our ways, so you keep cooking the same thing because it's good. Yeah, and then it gets boring. Shit, I cook a damn good this, that, or the other, so you get stuck in that. So mm-hmm. it's cool to force yourself to try new things. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Especially Asian cuisine, you know, it's so vast and the flavors are so different. Oh, yeah, ginger up Star in anise, there. man. Star anise, lemongrass, you know, things like that. It's not really big in Cajun cooking. Mm-hmm. So it's like an orgasm for your taste buds. Oh, you're not yeah. used to it. Makes you addicted to hitting freaking uh, pho and ramen places. Yeah, dude. I've just had pho from my first time last week. Really? Yeah, all this time. How was it? Excellent. <laughs> Where'd you have it from? Um, Next to La Hacienda and Broussard. Pho Love or something like oh, that, maybe? Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm familiar with that one, but we used to hit a lot of places around there. Faux Maison Home Noodle House is really good. Mm. On Johnson Street by the old Burnt behind Baskin Robbins. Place has been there for a long time. I don't know if I've had that I've one. I've had ramen there a lot, but pho I've only had once. Definitely going to have it again. Yeah, it's like uh, the coriander and all those different flavors in there. Basil. I love some basil, dude. Mm-hmm. I, I grow about seven different varieties of basil. Really? And they all taste completely different. That's awesome. I've only grown two. I did the purple basil mm-hmm. and the uh, Thai basil. Yeah. And yeah, those just those two are like very different, right? I got a cinnamon, a chocolate, a lemon, a holly basil, a sweet basil, red basil, purple basil. Um, a couple other ones. How's that chocolate one taste? Does it taste like... It's, it, it's sweeter... Sweeter and richer. Damn. But the thing with basil is you got to eat it fresh because if you, if the heat dissipates the flavor. So yeah. what I do is I, I dry it a lot of times. I'll dehydrate it. Then I have jars full of dried different basils. And I can add dried basil as you're cooking. Then it rehydrates and the heat doesn't ruin the flavor. Yeah. Then fresh basil I put in after I'm done cooking once the heat's off. That's badass. <laughs> Herbs and peppers, that's pretty much what I like to grow. Oh, man. Sounds like you got that shit figured out. Yeah. That's awesome. I grow a lot of aloe vera, too. So I just got a tattoo the other day, and I made, like, my own aftercare. I was wondering. It looks fresh. Yeah. That was my, so my dad just passed away in July. He had that tattooed on his arm. Oh, wow. The little so... baby devil. That was a popular tattoo in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> But I made my own aftercare stuff with a uh, good unprocessed coconut oil and aloe vera that I grow. And I put a little dried lavender in it as well. Then I just emulsify it. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, making things from things that you grow is really rewarding. Really rewarding, man. 100%. You know, then my great grandparents lived off of the land, and I'm sure yours did too. You know, during the Great Depression, that mm. was the norm. So I'm just kind of trying to go back to those roots. <laughs> no, right. It's like rare if people didn't but grow that's what, their own you know, shit. You know, they'd say, you know, that's what poor people did. This, that, but it's way better food. It's a higher quality life. I'd much rather go to the Delcom Canal and get a big redfish and put that on the grill than go and eat tilapia. 
that you know tilapia is grown in their own shit yeah exactly oh, oh, d- don't ever eat tilapia out there world <laughs> i've got a, a funny story about that as well we went to a sushi restaurant probably like they had, seven don't tell or me eight. they had tilapia sushi so check this out look <laughs> uh we were getting our we were ordering our rolls or whatever my buddy was like yeah i'll take this roll and uh instead of like the white fish can i get that is it like raw or cooked she's like oh it's cooking she, he was like can i get it raw like is and she's like oh yeah that's fine she was walking off and i was like what is the white fish and she was like it's tilapia oh, no <laughs> i was like you're about to serve this dude raw tilapia no questions asked i was like what the fuck <laughs> tilapia is disgusting man <laughs> Oh, that was so but great. But have you seen those uh, <laughs> self-sustainable setups where it's the chicken coop, the shit goes into the tilapia tank, and it's a whole like biodiverse system? No, I've, uh, I've seen some It's a whole ecosystem things. in a greenhouse with the chickens, and then they shit into the fish tank, and then the fish filter it out, this, that, and the other. And then they like take that water and do the hydroponic yeah, plants. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that's for awesome. fertilizer. Damn, that's great. I have seen some hydroponic setups with tilapia and then the in the garden yeah. thing, but I've never seen the chickens incorporated into that. So one of my old bosses in the car uh a business, his wife uh did hydroponic greenhouses. They do lettuce and stuff. It's called Green Acres. Really? They supply a lot of these local restaurants with hydroponic lettuce, you know, ten different kinds of lettuce, spinach, herbs. Nice. But it lacks flavor, I find. Oh really? Like hydroponic vegetables versus something grown in soil, there's a big difference in the flavor because it doesn't absorb as as much nutrients. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of just growing it in water and then putting chemical on it. Mm. Soil actually has the true nutrients in it. You know, you're putting blood meal, bone meal, eggshells, actual fertilizer as far as pieces of fish, fish emulsion. Have you, uh, I'm sure you probably Compost, have. Compost, you know. Have you gone down the rabbit hole and investigated soil yet? Uh, I don't think so. Bro, that was like an aha thing for me back in the day as well. Uh, because like when I moved out here, I was trying to build up, you know, I was researching like, okay, pots are like trying to get into mm-hmm. like the soil here. Compost is the way. It is. It's the only way. And so... I was looking up like, okay, <clears throat> how to build up your soil and the do's and don'ts. And, uh, I think I'm, I'm sure it's probably more than our nation, but our nation specifically is addicted to chemical fertilizers. And it is an addiction that is, uh, self feeding mm-hmm. because, if you start to use chemical fertilizers in soil, it kills the natural microbiome yeah. and then it replaces it. So with... you're talking about the no-till method. Right. Yeah. 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 Are you familiar with that? The no-till I am, method? Yeah. 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 And so what has happened over the course of years and years is that we dump all this chemical fertilizer on all of our like commercial cropland. Right. And now we have to do that. Yeah. And basically the soil that is there is only there to hold the roots, but has it's, no it's like nutrients. Then right? yeah. especially once we tame mother nature, as far as like the Mississippi river overflowing and depositing that luminous sediment. Mm hmm. I mean, the Mississippi River hasn't overflowed like it used to in a couple hundreds of years. And like the Nile in Egypt, that's where all the nutrients was, was from that luminous soil from the river silt. Mm -hmm. Once we tame Mother Nature and we stop the flooding process, there's no nutrients being deposited. Yeah, I am familiar with that. Yeah. It's so crazy. It's just, it's like the simple things that you just wouldn't think about. Then if you stop using it, the pests take back over. Mm -hmm. So a natural biome you don't have to worry about pests or bugs because it's all in harmony. They have creatures that are eating the bad things, which in turn are helping the production of nitrogen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I man, it's crazy. So that's like a huge reason why I stuck with the rabbits was because I wanted to just have my own yeah. like natural fertilizer. Right. Now, like I just put that in all my potted plants and just, it's crazy, but it actually, it does pretty well. Like you oh, just yeah. don't need to buy. Uh, the urban naturalist makes a, um, a potting mix 
and it's probably I think it's twenty percent rabbit rabbit manure. Yeah. And Peat I, moss is really good too. Yeah, I I so have that's a, my base for my soil. Uh, Peat moss, compost, perlite, bone meal, blood meal. I put a little Osmocote thirteen thirteen fertilizer in it. Not a lot, but it's a little something something. Yeah. You know? I'm guilty of having done it as well, but I mean, I'm not nearly doing it on the scale. Yeah, that, no, uh... no, no, no. I'm, st- I'm still putting in the natural nutrients. <laughs> yeah. But I there's could... a big difference in taste to me, man. I could taste the difference from chemically grown fruits and vegetables to mm. something compost based. I mean, even just like a tomato, right? From the store. Oh, like... dude. Does it even taste? <laughs> I, I didn't like tomatoes until we started growing them. Right. <laughs> I hated tomatoes. It's like this thing does not have a flavor. Yeah, it it tastes like water. But as I got into growing stuff, you know, each variety of tomato tastes completely different. Chocolate cherry tomatoes are my absolute favorite. Really? And then uh, a sunburst orange pear, small tomato, and I take them and I dehydrate them. I cut them in half. I do a balsamic vinegar sprinkle, brown sugar, and then different herbs and spices. I sprinkle it on it and dehydrate it. Then I have jars of these dried tomato chips. I Damn. eat them like candy or I put them in my rice and gravy or my sauces as I'm cooking. Because that tomato adds that umami flavor. Yeah. I love So I've been hanging out with a lot of competition cooks, you know, jambalaya, pasta, lye, gumbo, or whatever. And their secret is tomato paste. Really? They put a couple jars of tomato paste in that gravy and it sets it off. Dang. It does that umami flavor, and it's the same thing with my dried tomatoes. Interesting. I've been dabbling a little bit in the tomato paste myself. I did a uh, shepherd's pie the other day oh, that dude. came out pretty slamming. Yeah. I fucked it up the first time I ever made it. I do it, a lot but, of meat uh, pies like that. Really? I just buy a Pillsbury crust. I get some really high-end ground meat, coastal plains or something like that. Cream of mushroom, mushrooms, a bunch of rosemary from the garden. Yeah, love that stuff, man. I could talk cooking for a while, but uh, <laughs> so I gotta eat a lot of calories throughout the day. Oh yeah, maintain that muscle density. I try to, man. <laughs> What's your lifts looking like these days, my man? I've been seeing uh, at four. I'm four doing. Something. I'm doing a bench press contest on the nineteenth. Shit! Shout out to Iron House Gym and. Milton, we're doing something called Lifts for Lonnie. So Lonnie is a special needs girl, and we're doing a big benefit for her. Should I think we'll have bench press contest, 225 for reps, then weight classes, max bench, uh, the yoke walk. Mm. You know, that big apparatus that you load yeah. up and you walk for distance, then farmer lifts as well. But bench, I could put up 405 for a couple of reps. I could do 225 from anywhere from 20 to 26 reps, depending on the day. Damn. I could deadlift probably 550. That's awesome. But my lower body's, it's not quite up to par with my upper body. You know, my older age, my knees are bad, my back's bad. Mm -hmm. I don't lift like I used to. I like to chase the pump. It's, it's more about mental thing you, you know it's a mental clarity to me and if you lift heavy it you're more prone to getting injured oh, so then sure. if you just lift that's something comfortable then yeah like you said it's like you know that 20 to you... 12 reps is my comfort zone mm-hmm. but i also like to lift heavy too so every now and again i'll put the weight on the bar you know hell yeah i used to favor uh deadlifts a lot and, they're terrible uh, for your body though man they wreck your nervous system <laughs> yeah. terrible uh, yeah, I was always I, after getting I up I like to that the, hex deadlift. Mm-hmm. It, it feels a lot better and more natural to me. Yeah, it's more like farmer's carry mixed with a deadlift. Cause but of the way pull-ups you're... are my favorite exercise. To me, that's the real strength measure right there. Faux show. Sure. I could do pull-ups with, with 90 pounds strapped between my legs. Damn. For a few reps. I could do 30 or 40 body weight pull-ups. Really? Full extension. Like probably pause a second at the bottom yeah see i've been trying to work my way up because like that's that's one of those lifts where you're like oh it's just a pull-up you could do a bunch of pull up man yeah. it's hard it's, <laughs> it's hard it separates the men from the boys bro <laughs> yeah. 
I said, if a human being could do more than 10 pull-ups, you're probably in the top 1% of strength in the whole world. Damn. So I was reading a study a couple of weeks ago. You know, they said somebody that bench presses 225 pounds for one rep, you're in the 1% of top strength in the whole population of the earth. 315.0023. A 400 pounds plus point zero 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 point two percent something wow. crazy like that because most crazy. people don't even exercise yeah which is crazy it is crazy <laughs> man but like i had alluded to earlier you know being an addict i'll always have that addict desire inside of me so i just learned to transition my addictions to things that serve me better the gym success cooking gardening mm-hmm being a good man, doing charity work, you know, it feels good to help other people, but it also helps me scratch that, that same itch that I was, uh, you know, finding in drugs and alcohol. Absolutely. It's like commanding your mind rather than letting it lead you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know the But feeling. I hit the gym six times a week, you know, 5 a.m. I start my day off with it. I liked working out in the morning a lot too. Whenever I was going to UL, that's the only time that I was able to like. By the end of the day, I'm I'm just tired. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it. And once you get in a routine, you know, it's just part of my routine. Yeah. I can't sleep past four o'clock most of the time. <laughs> God. Even on the weekend. <laughs> that's crazy. What time do you go to bed though? Nine, ten. Yeah. <laughs> you know, ten o'clock to late night for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I try to go to I try to go to a show or something and I can't fucking make it. <laughs> I would totally be there, bro. Pass but, out. But what's cool is uh, like feed and seed, uh, boom boom room. They're starting to uh, start shows earlier because uh, people nice. ain't going. Yeah, I'm not going to watch a fucking concert at one in the morning. Yeah, they start at ten. Yeah, it's like, like uh, here, bro. That's why I, we're all getting old too. <clears throat> I mean, these bands were going to watch them. Dudes are 60 years old. Mm-hmm. I had wanted to go see um, Crowbar a couple of years back at the Boom Boom Room, but they started at 10. Like the yeah, show I started there. at 10. I made an exception for that. Oh, man. How was it? Awesome. Loud. I'm sure. Up close and personal. Oh, I've man. seen Crowbar probably 10 or 15 times. That was my favorite time because it's so intimate. Mm-hmm. You know, like Kurt Weinstein's right there. You know, I'm touching him. She's playing Planets Collide, and I'm fucking rubbing his head. Man, that's so sick. <laughs> oh, man. My, uh, me and my wife went and saw uh, Michael Graves yeah. at the Boom Boom Room. Who did he play with? Just uh, hired he, guns, I guess? No, he was with uh, the Misfits for a long time. No, I know who he is, but oh. who was in his band? Who was his supporting band? Uh, he, he was by himself. He was doing an acoustic show. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and um, it was super tight because of that intimate atmosphere yeah. right and uh whenever we rolled up over there we didn't know what to expect like i didn't know if he was rolling with a crew or whatever he was by himself with his merch gear yeah just shaking hands hanging out with people we went up and talked to them for a little while got a picture and it was like i had brought my guitar my uh my acoustic right there mm-hmm. just for the off chance that i'd possibly be able to get it signed by him and he was like yeah, probably man, thrilled to, yeah. yeah i was like this is just so crazy and man it's cool to meet your uh kind of musical heroes and they turn out to be good dudes yeah but a yes. lot of times they don't so you know that old saying is you know don't meet your idols fuck that i want to meet them yeah so far i've only met a handful of people that were like you know that i've looked up to for, you know, for music i haven't really met a whole lot of them, but they all turned out to be pretty cool so far uh, yeah nothing too crazy yeah i haven't had any really bad run-ins either I, I tried to meet dave mustaine one time but everybody knows he's a douchebag so i knew what to expect you know did I mean? you meet him I, no he wouldn't shake our hands because fucking covid oh, it's shit. like we did meet and greet for megadeth and lamb of god and it was like behind a fucking plexiglass what the oh, fuck give me my money back what? bitch yeah that's like it's like a <laughs> cop out man uh the gojira's really cool so we did a meet and greet with them in uh new orleans two years ago that's some really down to earth oh, guys man, man. That's they were awesome. cool as hell damn you know it took the time to talk to you shake your hand sign anything answer questions you know they just 
like regular guys. That's so sick. And now they're like shit. Mario Duplantis is and Duplanche is one of the best drummers to ever do it. Yeah, man. Yeah. What's your fest? What's your uh, favorite uh, Goodyear album? Or do you have a favorite? I don't really have a favorite, man. The one that I like cut my teeth on was the as as they progress it's almost like their genre changed each album's completely different style of music so it's like which era do you like you know yeah because the earlier stuff's more like you know black metal type now it's more more technical progressive metal you mm -hmm. know the way that they did terra incognita that i think that was their first album Mm -hmm. that one the sound of it just sounds so like big yeah and I don't know what they did to make that sound that way, but that's, I find myself going back to that album a lot because of that it just is like, I don't know, it's crazy. Like, I've modeled some of my song breakdowns in that solo album I did mm-hmm. off of uh, some of their songs in that one. I was just like, it's great. <laughs> yeah, man. Joe's a good guitar player. Good to see him live, too, man, because they're really technical and they don't miss a fucking lick. Mm. I think I've seen him four times. Really? So I'll see them anytime they come anywhere close. Damn. But then that last time they played with Mastodon. Man, Sick. those dudes are fucking awesome. That's a bucket list. I didn't really too. get into Mastodon until I saw them live. You know, I kind of one of those bands. I just never gotten to their music. Really? And I saw them live and shit. That's one of my favorite bands now. That's awesome. Yeah, I was I was that way with uh, Baroness. I went to see Paul Bearer. And then my buddy was there, and he was, and I think Bar- Baroness was like headlining, and he's like, "You gotta stay for Baroness." Like that's why he went. And I yeah. went for Paul Bear, and he was like, "You gotta stay." I was like, "All right, I'll check them out." And they were like pretty damn good. <laughs> and then I started listening to them after that. Yeah, the Melvins are another band like that for me. What is that one? The Melvins? Yeah, I don't know if I've ever heard anything by them. Check them out, dude. What, what it's genre? It's a three-piece band. Uh, you would think that they were from New Orleans like a doom sludge type but they're from seattle so pretty unique man but a big sound for a three-piece they're a trio and that's sick yeah probably one of the heavier trios out there buzz osborne's a singer guitar player he's got that a big afro (laughs) have to check that out so what are your uh where do you see yourself in your current uh, trajectory as far as like business goes? Uh, I know we're getting probably run for mayor of Lafayette. Yeah, the city council for sure. That's my aspirations. I'd vote for you. Yeah, I'm just a normal dude trying to help people, man. I and mean, what else more could you ask for? Exactly. That's but, right. But the roofing contractor market's awesome, dude. Very happy with that. I could see myself growing into more of a commercial aspect of it, you know, doing bigger commercial jobs. Nice. Do you just, like have plans to like own a business and then detach from it to where you're only having a kind of like let it be autonomous and then having like yeah, multiple? Yeah, I mean, or... that's everybody's goal. You know, the goal would be to do that with several businesses, start something mm-hmm. big, you know, then have it run itself. Yeah. And then do it again keep taking that same model and bring it into different industries. You know, that's my goal. I have a strong passion for entrepreneurship and really study it. You know, I'm really studied on it. I'm always reading a book. I'm always listening to podcasts. I'm always talking to my mentors. I'm always learning and I'm always evolving because the world's changed. You know, the world's always evolving. So if you stay stagnant, you'll get fucking ran over and ate up. Mm Mm-hmm. It's great. It's great to hear it, man. It's rare that you find people that are like hyper focused. It is rare, dude. And especially with these generations coming up. But at the same time, it's easier for people like me or people like you to find success because the competition's just not there. Because most people aren't doing it. You know, they're just not putting the work in. They want everything given to them. Mm -hmm. Or another thing that I find is that it's the time right if you look at how much time people are willing to put into like watching tv shows for like multiple seasons or like just bullshit right that eats up your time and then it's and then on the flip side of the coin it's like investing the time into like what you're doing like learning how to do something and 
bring a business to life or just like investing in your own craft or developing a skill if you would take the amount of time you put towards that show season and put it towards oh, the other thing, you'd be amazed at how much you'd like. You'd be in get a whole different position as far as your life trajectory. <laughs> right. It's just like anything. It's like playing guitar. If you take the time to practice things mm-hmm. and actually hone your craft, I mean, you could literally do anything that you want. You know, it sounds cliche, but if you put the time in, you yep. you set goals for yourself and you work towards those goals, the sky's the limit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I learned that back whenever I was living out of my apartment. I had spent an entire week. I think it was a week. We had get we had gotten off for uh, what was it Christmas or something like that. Uh, I had taken that week and basically just played uh, Path of Exile because I love playing video games and all that shit. <clears throat> played Path of Exile, level up a few characters, and by the end of the week, people were asking like, "Oh, what'd you do for that week and all that stuff?" And I, and all I could think of was that I hadn't, you know, done that. And I was like, "Man, that really sucks." Like if I think about it, like yeah. I can't, and it's gonna get wiped away when the next league drops. And I'm like, I could have taken that time and done something more productive. And then after that, like that was the hard line, and I that's when I bought my my recording gear and started recording and I put the amount of time that I would have in a game into like recording an album and I ended up with an entire album out of that and so then after that I was just like man this is crazy so that's why like (laughs) when people ask me if I like watch this show or that show I literally don't watch TV at all (laughs) like I just don't do it I don't have cable or anything like that I have have, have bunny ears and I stream a little bit yeah yeah, so I figured out five, six years ago, kind of when I got sober, you know, I kind of developed the mantra, I'll catch myself doing frivolous, like mindless activities, and I'll bring myself back to baseline. So if it's not improving my health, my wealth, or my family, I'm not doing it. I get out of it. Hell yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. I feel that. But that's what the government wants us to do, man. They want us to be mindless drones, you know, NPCs, non-playable characters. Consume. You know, kind of like Rowdy Pow- uh, shit, Rowdy Rowdy Piper and that John Carpenter movie. Uh, oh, with the glasses? They're live or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is accurate for show. Be dependent on everything. That's, that's uh, <laughs> what I was thinking about. They whenever. live. That's what it's called. They live. Yeah, whenever you're talking about how uh, what's deemed like, oh, we don't grow vegetables or we don't grow crops because that's like a poor thing to do or yeah, like an old time right. thing. Those those terms that people dish out, it makes you wonder if that's not out there just to to like, oh, it's not like like saying, oh, it's not cool to be smart in school. Oh, it's, all, it's just <laughs> yeah. all the psychological operation, dude. Yeah. It's all the psyop. Uh, it's like, wow, why would you say that? Now, like, 90% of the population doesn't grow anything, and they all are dependent on grocery stores, and what's going to happen if things don't go as planned with I'm society? Ready for it. But yeah. A lot of people aren't. Uh, I think about that shit often. Yeah. I think about it daily. I prep, prep for it daily, you know? Mm-hmm. So they're trying to make it impossible uh, to be a property owner. You know, that's the way things are going. Yeah. You know, Bill Gates is buying up all the property. So Bill Gates and the Chinese communist government are the two largest property owners in the United States of America. My dad talks about that often as well. Yeah. It's crazy. Then China, you know, call me conspiracy theorist or whatever. I don't give a fuck. China is buying up all of the land surrounding military bases, all the farmland, all the land around military bases. That in conjunction with the mass migration of mm-hmm. illegals that are all uh, war-aged males. If it's what they say it is, they, they, they would have families coming across, but 80% are males from the age of 17 to 26 by themselves. It's coming, folks. It's coming. Makes you think. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this election doesn't even happen. I've said that. I called called this last year and everything is coming to fruition. What better way than to stifle the election is with major hurricanes that go up the East Coast. And look, I documented, I have it written down, I have it dated. I saw this coming. That and like war 
or like you know we're on the cusp of like well all eating. in conjunction uh-huh. should all these events rolled together it's not just going to be one thing it's going to be a the trifecta of, of it black swans like yeah. they call them yep. yeah oh yeah i i've there'll my... be a, um some internal conflict soon mm-hmm. these little terror terror cells will start flaring up i mean look at what's happening in colorado with uh the Hondurans or whatever, these oh, yeah. gangs, you know, taking over the uh, apartment complexes. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Mm-hmm. Pretty Come crazy. try that shit around here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've talked here to in my... Texas, you know, yeah. in a southern state. Yeah, I've, uh... I, I barbecue a Panamanian. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A little bit kidding. I'm not. <laughs> it depends on the fat content. Ah <laughs> uh, shit! Well, yeah, man. But what do you think is going to happen with this election? I've I've talked about it with my friends. A I don't fair think it's going to happen. I, I've I've said that exact same thing. I just really don't. They're going to declare martial law, or I, uh, you know, I do feel like the oddball out whenever I, I I say shit like that. But uh, you know, it. You know, I'm trying to not really dwell too much on politics, but man, it's a big controlling factor of our everyday life. Uh, Who's in office? What kind yeah. of government are we going to have? I do wonder how, uh, you know, if, if nothing happens before election, I'd be very surprised because it feels like all the uh, key components are there, right? Yeah. They got war right spreading on the cusp of fucking out. World War III. I yeah. Mean, not only the Middle East, you got, you know, China and Taiwan, Russia mm-hmm. and the Ukraine. It's on every front. Mm-hmm. European, Asian, Middle East. So what's next? It's America. I know, right? Like we are so spoiled to not having had any kind of like. Major but how did war we go here? from not ha- from basically having world peace to having skirmishes on all fronts now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something changed four years ago, yeah, and then happened. all of a sudden, <laughs> they, uh, fear of control by strength is a real thing. Yeah, you know Donald Trump's an asshole, douchebag. This that and the other but at the end of the day he put America first and people knew to not fuck around yeah I'm not trying to have a beer with the man but I think we need a strong business leader to run our country and bring us back to the American dream yeah I would uh, I would like to see a leader uh, take into grasp the economy as far as like putting value back into the the currency because the, it's it it's the devaluation of our currency that keeps us the slave yeah, right right and uh it only gets worse so then unless you find some way to stop it which i don't know if it's even possible like that was another thing that i was investigating pretty hard at one point i'm still doing it as well as like because you, you know at some point your money your, your monetary value of your like property or like any any kind of store of wealth is gonna be much better to have than the dollars yeah and uh you know it's it's a balance of trying to convert tangible that. assets is is the way to go now yeah it's spooky like so are you familiar with nasera jacera so i'll send it to you <laughs> hit me with it yeah, I think about that all the time. Some Zimbabwe inflation type shit goes down here, and all of a sudden you're paying. Uh, I mean, it's 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 already crazy to think that we're paying like seven bucks a gallon for for milk. Like I remember my mom bitching about it being four bucks a gallon. So I mean, I can remember it being two dollars, dude. <laughs> yeah. I remember vividly as a child, my dad giving me twenty bucks, going to the grocery store and getting a buggy full of groceries for twenty fucking dollars. Twenty dollars buys you three chicken breasts now. Yes, and wages are similar to the same. They've gone up, but it they they ain't on par. It's not the same pace. Not even yeah. close, man. Yeah, walk out of the grocery store holding a couple bags, and you spend a hundred bucks. You're like, man, what the hell happened? How did this? How did this happen? <laughs> Just in our lifetime. I mean, I'm 39 years old. Yeah. Or like when you look at those uh, pictures of the uh, Taco Bell dollar menus, yeah. the, the the five layer beef bean burrito. burrito used to be sixty eight cents, four dollars like, now. Yeah, four x. Holy shit! How could they have done this to us? 
<laughs> we're cooked, chat. And then, of course, we got the uh, <laughs> the Green New Deal bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, yeah. how about uh, all the lithium mines under Asheville, North Carolina? Heard about that, yeah. The story they wouldn't let develops. them do it. They wouldn't sell their land. They wouldn't get off the land. Well, let's just wipe you out then, huh? <laughs> yeah. And then Flood Tampa the- is going to be one of those smart cities. They've been trying to push a smart city for, for years and years. And what a coincidence, the two major cities that got wiped out by these uh, strangely strong and late hurricanes. I didn't even realize the smart city one. Yeah, yeah, man. Tampa, they're hitting that really, really hard. Hmm. Yeah, they just, I, I haven't even like kept up with the the Milton d- damage but I'm sure it wasn't very great probably creamed them pretty thank good thank god it uh tapered off right before landfall mm. you know I, I think it hit I got a category 3 which is still bad pretty devastating brutal, yeah. it's not a 5 yeah for sure it's a big difference between 120 and 180 <laughs> wins because yeah. nothing's engineered to withstand really over 130 shit yeah, that's bonkers well I think we're getting towards the end yeah, of it right I here. I talk shit all day long. I know, right? Same, especially once I get a little bit of this uh, <laughs> wine up in me. But grape I'll... juice. <laughs> I do appreciate you coming out, oh, man. Anytime, you, got any, man. Uh, you got any final words you want to let the people know? Follow your dreams, man. Never give up on yourself. Your current situation isn't a final destination. Focus on being a better person and let's love each other. We got one of the biggest elections of our lifetime going on. Don't let that jeopardize friendships or families because we all want the same thing. Whether you're Democrat or Republican, all we want to do is have a safe place for our family and the ability to provide a nice living for our family. Let's band together and love each other. We're all in this together. Thank you all. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. Peace out, everybody. I'll be back.